Bernard Corral, and I am the developer, the inventor of the emergency bandage. I'd like now to show you the short film on how to use the bandage in different situations. The emergency bandage is a new treatment device for the treatment of hemorrhage in pre-hospital emergency situations. The emergency bandage is double wrapped in sterile packaging. The outside packaging has four notches for easy access to the bandage. Opening it on one side either with your hands or sometimes as is the case medics have only one hand to work with. At each notch you can always open it. Access to the bandage again then there is the internal packaging. As long as these packagings are, packages are intact then there are then there is sterility. The bandage comes in sandwich form, wrapped so that first that will come out will be this tail. And this tail allows you to stretch the bandage without putting your fingers on the pad that comes to the wound. On the top side of the bandage you have the pressure bar. The pressure bar is used to exert that direct pressure through the pad onto the wound to stop the bleeding in the field. The emergency bandage is applied to the wound area and because of the design of the pressure bar it must stand up and it is there to readily accept the wrapping leader. So now you insert the wrapping leader into the pressure bar and you go back in the opposite direction. This locks the leader in place but locks it that can always be moved and altered. It's not permanently locked. The pressure is then created when you wrap the leader on top of the plastic pressure bar, forcing it down through the pad onto the wound. And as you can see, once that's done, the pressure bar acts as a buckle as well, and it gives me a great deal of freedom, basically wrapping with one hand. After the application of pressure has been accomplished, you then wrap a few degrees downwards below the wound and then a few more degrees above and then you have created a secondary sterile dressing without the need for additional equipment. A very important factor as well is that once the pad is in place with the pressure and the secondary dressing the whole application doesn't move. The closure bar is one of the major uh, benefits of the emergency bandage very much like the pen in your pocket. When you reach the end of the leader, you find the previous revolution and insert it on both sides. And the emergency bandage stays in place. The occasion may arise where additional pressure is needed to stop the bleeding. So the, pressure, the closure bar is easily removed from a closure position and then you identify where the pressure bar is under the wrapping leader and you take a revolution or two and you insert the closure bar under that revolution making sure you have plastic to plastic and you rotate it. This rotation bunches and tightens the wrapping leader on the top of the pressure bar, screwing the pressure bar down through the pad onto the wound. There, the wrapping leader remains wide here so as not to create an inadvertent tourniquet, whereas here you've created additional direct pressure by screwing down the pressure bar. Likewise, in the same fashion, closure is accomplished by hooking in one or two of the previous revolutions Many times the possibility exists that if the wound is not too serious, a sling can also be affected by using the remainder of the leader. And that's done by just continuing the wrapping of the limb around and closing in this fashion. In spite of the pressure that's been exerted, there is still a pulse. It doesn't create a tourniquet effect. However, in extreme, extreme cases, 
there may be times where a tourniquet needs to be applied. And this is, of course, only for medical professionals. However, a tourniquet can be applied using the same principle. You remove the closure bar from its uh, position, and you take some of the revolutions above the wound, you insert the closure bar in a previous revolution above the wound, on the artery, whether it's the arm or the leg, and here also trying to put the revolution and the, and the tourniquet effect on, uh, on the leader so as not to pinch the skin. And you create a tourniquet effect. And likewise here, closure is accomplished by hooking in the closure bar. Please remember, the emergency bandage is a one-time use device. So you use it uh, to its best uh, functionality. You do what you have to do in order to affect a proper bandaging. Wrapping of the leg, uh, the leg wound, is the, basically the same as wrapping uh, and bandaging the upper arm. You wrap the wrapping leader around the limb, engage the pressure bar, going in the opposite direction to create the traction, and then when you wrap on top of the pressure bar, additional pressure is created through the pad onto the wound to stop the bleeding. You wrap a few degrees below the wound and then a few degrees above the wound and again you have affected a sterile secondary dressing. You remove the closure bar from its first closure position, identify where the pressure bar is, find the plastic, insert the closure bar under a revolution or two uh, above the pressure bar, plastic to plastic, and then rotate the closure bar. This tightens the wrapping leader and bunches it above the plastic pressure bar. And as you rotate, this screws the pressure bar down through the pad onto the wound, creating extra ad uh, additional pressure to the wound site. Likewise here, there is no tourniquet created as the bandage remains wide and does not form a rope. Closure is affected in the same way. You take the end and just insert it as you do a pen in your pocket and the bandage will stay in place. What can often be accomplished when there's a leg wound is with the remaining leader you can effect a sort of splint immobilization of the wounded leg to the other leg and closure is accomplished in much the same fashion as uh, at all times inserting the closure bar in between previous revolutions of the wrapping leader. Wrapping of head wounds is also easily accomplished with the emergency bandage. One of the major benefits of the plastic pressure bar is that it allows you to change direction while bandaging. You insert as in previous situations. Now, if you have a serious bleeding wound, then you exert pressure when you wrap. If you don't, if you do not have a serious bleeding wound, then it's used as a wound covering. I want to emphasize that the leader, the elastic leader of the emergency bandage cups the chin very well and allows the person to still uh, speak uh, if he wants to. You cover the pressure bar, you wrap again, and now you have these hard corners which you can use to change direction in bandaging. And when you can change direction in bandaging, that always ensures you a better uh, fixation of the bandage to the wound area. Closure is accomplished in the same way where you take the closure bar and insert it in previous revolutions of the wrapping leader. The patient, any part of the head can be wrapped and the patient uh, can see most of the time and speak and laugh. Often wounds are on parts of the body that are not easily bandaged with the existing equipment. The emergency bandage pressure bar gives you the ability to bandage difficult parts of the body. If you have, for example, a wound in the armpit or the groin here, you can 
turn using the elasticity of the uh, wrapping leader, you can turn the pressure bar in the direction that you need it. And by wrapping, for example, and pulling from both sides at the same time, and then wrapping on top, you create a very strong placement of the bandage. It's not even necessary to go around the body, but if you want to, you always have enough wrapping leader to go around the body and create a very strong closure. Likewise, the closure, as in all cases, is by inserting the closure bar into a previous revolution. And there's wrapping of the body by using the different elements of the emergency bandage, the elasticity, the pressure bar, and the closure bar. Self-application of the emergency bandage on different parts of the body is easily accomplished with the emergency bandage. For example, on the upper arm, what you would do is create an inner space. You insert the wrapping leader into the pressure bar, using it as a buckle this time, basically, and you bring the bandage and the pressure bar to the area that you need it. Wrapping the leader is accomplished with one hand, basically. And closure, as when treating someone else, is accomplished in the same fashion, where you take the closure bar and insert it into previous revolutions, very much like a pen goes into a pocket. Application of the emergency bandage to the chest or torso, either in self-application or to a second party, is easily accomplished. For example, you would take, if it's self-application, you would take the emergency bandage and you would apply it to the area of the wound. You insert the leader into the closure bar and go back in the other direction. Depending upon where the wound is, you can then either move the bandage pad to where you need it to be, and then you wrap with the wrapping leader above the wound. The elasticized bandage allows the wounded, whether it's self-application or not, to continue to breathe without hindering his breathing. And again, closure is easily accomplished by inserting the closure bar into a previous revolution of the wrapping leader. Please feel free to contact your local representative regarding any questions that you may have about First Care products and the emergency bandage. We'll be happy to answer any questions that you have. Thank you very much.